Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Monica Rea, and today I'm gonna show you how I went about making this. It is a late 1890s inspired corset, um, and just a little bit of the specs of the corset, if you will. Um, it has hip and bust gores. Also, there's um, some cording involved as far as like one of the panels of the corset as well as the gores are corded. I also use spring still boning and um, the front closure of it is a zipper. So for this corset, the overall vibe that I wanted was a very smooth silhouette. I didn't want it to show pretty much um, underneath clothes. So that's why I went with the zipper and no lace or frills on this one. My next corset will have all the frills and I'm gonna do a busk closure for that one. But for this one, I just went ahead and kept it real sleek and smooth. This corset was a lot of fun to make and it definitely came with its fair share of challenges, which is one of the things that I love about sewing because not only is it a creative expression in and of itself, but whenever issues arise, it kind of requires you to give like a creative twist to your problem solving skills. And so a really quick disclaimer, I did not do a mock-up or any twalls for this corset. Technically in the grand scheme of things, this is the mock-up because I do plan on making another corset that's more frilly and stuff, but for this particular corset, I chose not to do a mock-up and I generally don't do mock-ups for my garments and I totally get the point of them, but this is just how I've chosen to go about perfecting my sewing skills. And even if there may be like minor imperfections on some of the garments, I still wear each and every one of them with pride. And plus, I think it's really cool to look in your closet and in each of your garments, you kind of get a snapshot of where you were in your sewing journey or even in your techniques that you were using or where you were at. I think it's a really cool story that you see and it makes, I think, everything so much more personal and special that way. So with that being said, let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started cutting out all the pattern pieces. This particular pattern has a total of 10 panels and 10 gores. So the inner layer, what I'm cutting out right now is a single ply cotton shirting fabric, which is pretty thin. And then these, this is the outer layer, which is like a heavyweight khaki. Um, and then for the interior, I'm using a cotton canvas. These are the pattern pieces that I'm actually going to be doing the cording detailing on. So this includes all 10 of the gores. And then of course, that is the front side panel. On the front side panel, I'm going to put the cording in vertically. And then on the scores, the cording is going to be placed horizontally. Okay, so to get started with our first gore, this is the first hip gore, I am going to just place the one canvas layer underneath the um, shirting layer. This is the layer that you'll see and I'm just gonna go ahead and start the cording. So to help keep this cording process as smooth as possible, what I did was sew a single stitch attaching the outer layer to the canvas layer, and then that way I was able to have kind of like a baseline to press the yarn up against. And the yarn that I'm using, I believe is called like sugar and cream. It's just your typical 100% cotton yarn. It's pretty soft and it's, it was really easy to work with. I'm really excited to experiment in the future with different cording weights to see exactly how much support cording by itself can provide. And so what you do is press the 
the yarn right up against the stitch and you kind of press it firmly against that stitch and then using the zipper foot which helps you get really really close and you just sew right along the piece of yarn and then I just kind of like wrap it around and do like a zigzag pattern with the yarn just to avoid cutting and having extra pieces of fibers and things in the way. And splitting it in half that way kind of keeps, it helps keep the lines straight. So I'm just going to finish the upper half of this score and then follow the same steps for all of them. And here's what it looks like on the back. And all I'm going to do is just cut off the excess and then the score will be ready to be inserted. And as you'll see, some of these gores are going to be placed inside individual panels and some of them are inserted into the seams in between panels. This one is one that is actually inserted within the panel. So what we do there is um, just cut right up the middle of this little triangle here and then I'm going to press the seams back or press the edges back and that'll give it a nice smooth appearance and as you can see like it already looks really good so what I'm gonna do is pin this gore in real quick And using a zipper foot, I'm going to stitch around the gore with a very tight stitch or a very short stitch length to make sure that everything is nice and secure. Being that this is my first gore that I'm stitching in, I was trying to give it a bit of a contour or dimension, but now looking back, like it wasn't really necessary. The the gores themselves and once they're all put together and then how each panel is cut out it gives ample curves and dimension so this is the center front and it's going to have a zipper so what I've done here is I've pressed the edges inward now I'm just going to sew the zipper on And in this case, I don't really have to worry about uh, placing the zipper within the layers or anything like that because later there will be the lining layer that will cover it all up very nicely. Yay, so the zipper is done and it works. So now on to the front side panel and I'm going to sew it from the bottom up to that point there because that is where our first bust gore goes. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin those pieces together and hit the sewing machine. And don't mind me guys, sometimes I do end up putting the pins backwards. I still haven't gotten it together yet with that. <laughs> And then also, um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I struggle with actually sticking with the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance or seam allowance. So this first panel that I did, very small amount of seam allowance, but for the rest of the corset, rest assured, I did use the little measurements that are on the uh, plate on the, I forget what you call it, the little, the sewing plate plate thing down there I did actually use the lines and stuck with the 5 8 of an inch all right and now with that seam all sewn up to the proper spot I'm gonna go ahead and press the seams open and get it all nice and ready to have the gore inserted so um, each and every just kind of like how I did a different seam allowance on this particular seam each of the gores well not all of them but these first couple of gores that i 
sewed in are slightly different from one another so I believe like this first one I ended up trying to sew the gore in between the two layers which later I realized wasn't really necessary so now with this first bust gore all pinned in I'm going to go ahead and sew around it very closely just like I did the other gores Alrighty, and now we got those done on both sides. I just dipped it together because I was just so eager to see like what it was looking like just to kind of get an idea. So next up, we're going to sew on the actual side panel. And this one again is going to be sewn up from the bottom to that point right there where we're going to stop and then insert the second bust gore. And here's kind of what it'll look like after it's sewn. You know, I like to double check. It generally helps everything goes smoother, but yeah, as you'll see, you can still run into uh, a little discrepancies here and there. Okay, so now that we've got that sewn up, I'm going to place the second bus score in, but first I'm going to press the seams open, and this time, learning from the first bus score, I'm going to go ahead and press the seams all the way up to the very top instead of stopping right at where the gore would be placed. It looks a lot smoother that way. So here's what it looks like all nice and pressed. And now I'm going to go ahead and insert the second bust gore. All right, and now that one is done. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach the next panel, which is the back side panel. And this one doesn't have a gore in the seam, so I can actually just attach it from top to bottom. I must say going through the process of making this corset, I'm really excited to make another one and also playing around with the different fabrics. I do want to work with Quatille. I never have before, but I know it's pretty popular. And maybe even putting the boning on the outside of the corset. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and pop on this last panel. And in between the side back panel and the back panel there was a gore so I just went ahead and sewed that on real quick and now I'm going to start on the lining fabric which I sewed together in the same fashion. And so here's what it looks like all completed. And now before I can install the lining to the corset I need to trim down the excess fabric from the seams and around the gores. So here's what it's looking like on the inside right now. So I'm just carefully trimming away the excess fabric very carefully because OMG, could you imagine we accidentally like cut through it or something? I was low key freaking out about that the entire time, but I didn't do it. All right, and now it's time to place the lining in there. Um, what I'm gonna start out doing is rolling this edge over and sewing it along the zipper. And to do this, I need to sew along the exact same stitch that I did when I first put the zipper on. So, in order to do that, I was of course going to use my pins, but the pins don't quite help in scenarios like this. I'm so happy that I had these clips because they worked out amazingly for this step and the others you'll see. 
At this point, I am attaching the lining to the corset at the center front, stitching along the exact same stitch that I did to install the zipper. I will admit it was a little bit nerve wracking, but I went really slow and I think it turned out awesome. So here's the inside along the zipper. It's just about time to put the binding along the top and bottom of the corset. But first, I need to trim off the excess fabric here at the top and also attach the lining to the center back of the corset and to do so as you can see like it kind of fans out I pretty much fanned it out at the top and smooth the fabric towards the center back and then I fan it out at the bottom and smooth the fabric to the center back at which point the edges at the center back will be pressed inward about 3 eighths of an inch and then sewn down And here is the center back seam with the lining attached. And here's what it looks like on the outside. Real quick, this is going to be the boning placement. So starting at the center back, the eyelets are going to go here. And I want to install two boning panels on either side of the eyelets. And then um, there will be a a boning channel on either side of each seam and then once we get to the corded panel I'm just gonna let the cording do its thing and I'm going to place a boning channel on either side of the cording and then finally one along the zipper so using the stitch that I just did connecting the lining to the outer layer I'm going to use that as my guide to make the first boning channel in the back and it just so happens that with the uh, boning that I have, the width of the, the foot that I'm using actually is the perfect size for the boning channel. So I'm just using that first row of stitching as my guide. And now that I have those two done, I'm going to make a gap in between them that is a centimeter and a half wide. And I'm just going to mark that off and then on the other side of that make two more boning channels. Alright, and now that I have those done, now I'm just going to go ahead and use the foot, the edge of the foot, to go around and make all of the boning channels. And I will show you what they look like after I'm done. And voila, they are all done. And so now it's time to insert the boning. And this is the spring, or I don't know why I keep calling it spring steel. It is um, spiral steel boning. And I'm using this handy dandy tool. Don't ask me what it's called. I found it in the toolbox and um, yeah, it is a corset boning cutter for me. I don't know what its real use is, but it works great. So the boning came with these little metal tips. I just used them to slide the boning through the channel easier and then took them off. I know some people leave them on for various reasons, but I chose not to. And so we're moving right along. It's about time to put the binding on when I had to hit the pause button. So remember the part where I was talking about a little bit of creative problem solving? This is the part where I had to get a little creative because I was in a rush and wanted to hurry up and get to the eyelets and doing the binding and all of that. So one side of the corset didn't quite line up at the hip gore 
And so I ended up having to put a gore within a gore on the inside to make it fit. So overall it went pretty well, but if you're ever wondering how to do a gore within a gore, check this out. To handle this nifty gore and gore business, I'm going to follow the exact same steps I did with the initial gore. So I'm going to make a slit right here and cut out a triangular piece of fabric to cover the slit. And to complete this gore and gore, I'm going to hand sew it in place. And there you have it. It's all complete. Everything lays nice and flat and all is well. And honestly, I think it adds a really nice touch of character and charm to the corset. Now I can move on to putting the binding on. I use the same fabric as the outer fabric. I just cut one inch wide strips that were slightly longer than the length of the top and bottom of the corset. And then I'm just going to first sew the first side on by machine and then I'm going to flip it over and hand sew the rest of it down. And it's like magic, even though the binding is only halfway done, I don't know what it was, but all of a sudden the curves of the corset really started to take shape. A little bit about the pattern that I used. It's apparently a reproduction of an early 1890s corset. I'll leave the link down in the description so you can check that out. And they have other corset patterns and various garment patterns from different um, time periods. I chose this pattern because it most closely matched the corset that I had imagined originally. So just about everything that it has is what I wanted. I would like to add that the original pattern instructions are included however they're not super clear and concise and that's presumably because the average person's sewing skills were higher than that of an average person now so here moving on to the eyelets i am marking out the spots that i want to place the eyelets in in one inch intervals So to first make these holes, I'm going to use an awl and then later I'll be using um, <laughs> my pencil to make the holes a little bit bigger because though I love the awl, it doesn't make your holes very big. Um, but the one great thing about it is that it doesn't rip your fabric or tear it. It just pushes the fibers out of the way. It helps to keep the structural integrity of the garment and allows it to be a lot more durable. And you definitely want that if you're making a corset. Here are the eyelets that I'm using. Um, I chose gold because it matches the zipper. <laughs> And there it is, my first eyelet. So now we're gonna go ahead and do all the rest of them, which I believe there are 13 eyelets to be on either side. And now for the fun part of lacing up the corset. So what I'm doing here is starting at the top and then I'm just going to lace down one side and then do the other because I'm doing what's called the bunny ears method and this type of lacing helps you to be able to lace your own corset. Okay, and there is one last final thing that I need to do before the corset is completely done, which is putting on the zipper pull. To go along with the more sleek and simple silhouette that I wanted, I just picked a very simple hoop zipper pull. Right, here's the final corset, all completed. It's very comfortable. 
I will say, which I'm happy that I am going to be making another corset. Um, I will be using the same pattern, but doing some different design elements, as I mentioned earlier. And I will be doing some modifications to the pattern as far as making this a little bit smaller. I really, really love this pattern a lot. It was a lot of fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Alrighty, that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining me in today's video. Of course, if you have any questions or if there was anything that you want more clarity on, leave it down in the comments. And I appreciate each and every one of you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.